in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this table preset system. So this allows you to predefine some shapes and then recall them using buttons, or you could use a slider or a combo box, whichever controls you prefer. Okay, so let's start a new instance of highs and we'll build this from scratch. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is over here in the module tree, we're going to add a sine wave generator and under gain modulation, we're going to go to voice start and select velocity modulator. And we're going to click use table. We're going to right click in the header section here and select create typed table script reference. So this will create a script reference that is of the type table. And then we'll paste that into our script. Let's make a bit more room here. So that's our reference to that modulators table. Okay, on our UI, we're going to add a button. We'll call it BTN VEL zero. So that's BTN for button, VEL for velocity zero, because this is the first one. We're going to set the radio group to one and we're going to turn off saving preset and we'll add a second button. I'll just click on it over here in the component list and hit F2 to rename it. We're going to call it BTN VEL1. And again, we'll add it to radio group one and turn off saving preset. And now we're going to add a table. Click in the component list, press F2 to rename it. TBL for table, VEL for velocity. And we're going to assign this over here where it says processor ID, we're going to select velocity modulator one. And we'll hit compile, turn off edit. And if we open our module tree, there's our velocity modulator. So this table on our UI is now linked to this table here. So any changes we make to this one will be reflected on the other and vice versa. Okay, now we need to make some presets of our table. So let's do one that's like this. And can you see this green outline here? When that green outline is showing, it means that the table is actively selected. So we can press Control and C on our keyboard or Command C on a Mac, and that will actually copy this shape that we've set up here to our clipboard. And we can paste that in. So let's create an array called shapes. And in here, we'll paste that shape that we've copied and it's going to be a string. So we'll put it in quotation marks. So that's the string that represents this shape. Now we can add another shape. Let's just do something like that. And again, I'll press control and C. And if we go to the end of this, it doesn't fit on my small screen here so well. So we'll add a comma there, quotation marks and paste in the second shape. So this one doesn't have as many points, which is why it's a shorter string. Okay, let's open our UI back up. So now we need to get references to these two buttons. So BTN VEL and we'll make an array called BTN VEL. And this is going to be used to store our buttons. We'll have a loop for I equals zero. I is less than two, I plus plus. So we've got a loop that counts from zero to one. So that's why we named our buttons BTN VEL zero, BTN VEL one. And we're going to get references to these buttons and add those references to this array. So BTN VEL dot push content dot get component BTN VEL. And then we add I on the end there, our iterator to give us the zero and the one. Okay. And we'll need to assign a callback to these. So we'll do BTN VEL I dot set control callback on BTN VEL control. And then we've just got to actually define that callback function. So we'll do that here. Let's just add a few more lines to make this display a bit higher up the screen. So we'll write our callback function. And this is stuff that you can do just by right clicking and selecting create custom callback, but I like to type it out. 
So this callback will be triggered when either of these buttons are clicked, and we need to find out which button was clicked. So we're going to use the component, which represents the button that triggered the callback, and we're going to find out where this component appears in our btn vel array, and that will give us the index 0 or 1, so we'll know which button has been clicked. So local variable called index is going to equal btn vel index of component. And we can just console.print that. This is the sort of thing I've done in quite a few other videos, so hopefully you're familiar with this. But now when I click one of these, it's going to tell us which one was clicked. Uh, the reason we're getting a double zero there, and when I click on here we'll get a double one, is because these are in a radio group. So when you click one of them, it's also triggering the other one. So we'll handle that in a moment. Okay, so the next thing to do is to check that the button is active, so if value, because we're only interested in the button that's been activated, not the one that's been turned off. So if the button's active, we want to set this table to either the first or the second shape in our array, depending on which button it was. So hopefully you can see already that we've got an index here from our buttons array, and we've got two things in our shapes array, so we can use the same index. So we need to get our velocity modulator one. Let's just paste that down there. And the function we need, let's just look that up. That's in here. I think it's restore from, that's the one. Restore from base 64, this function here. And this only applies to table processors, which is why we needed to use this function here, synth.getTableProcessor. So we'll do restore from base 64. And this takes two parameters. The first parameter is the table. Now in our case, we're referring to this velocity modulator, which only has one table, but some modulators like the table envelope, for example, have two tables. So you would need to know which of those tables you want. But because this only has one table, we can just put a zero in here. And then the next thing we want to put in here is the base64 string, which is basically one of these strings here. So we'll put our shapes array and we'll index that with our index variable. Semicolon on the end and we'll hit compile. And now this should all be set up. So when I click this button, it should change to the first shape and this one should change to the second. And that should also appear here because the table is linked. And it's as easy as that. And if you want to add more shapes and more buttons, you can just um, uh, duplicate the, the buttons we've got here. In fact, I'll show you how easy it is to add more. So we can add another button. Just move it up there. Call it BTN Vel 2. Set it to Radio Group 1, turn off Saving Preset. And we'll need a shape for this one, so let's do something like that. So we'll copy that, add it to our shapes array. And then we just need to increase this number here to three because we've got three buttons now, not two. And I'll hit F5. And now we've got three of these. So you can see how easy it is to expand this system because we're using uh, array indexes. And we've named our buttons in a sensible way that allows us to access them easily in a loop like this. So it just makes it so much easier to expand the functionality as we need to. Okay, I hope you found this useful. Uh, the snippet for this is actually already on the highs forum because this was a response to a, a question on there. So I'll post a link in the video description to that forum topic so you can download the snippet. If you've got any questions or comments, you just leave them below the video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.